Welcome to a new video. Today I wanted to talk about the tomahawk again um, and especially about what kind of sharp tomahawk you can use. Of course for training you should use a tomahawk which is um, best made of plastic or uh, maybe aluminium, something padded, um, depending on the level of force you want to use. But even the plastic tomahawks have a lot of impact. So whatever you do with sparring and so on, be careful. You can use very light metal tomahawks, which are also used in uh, reenactment. Um, but again, you cannot make do full force sparring with them. And when you do um, practice um, like partner drills and so on, you still have to be very careful. Um, if you want to do solo drills or just want to have a sharp tomahawk because of reasons um, or for some outdoor or bushcraft work or for wood uh, processing or just as a wall hanger, home defense, zombie apocalypse, there are several options on the market. Um, the tomahawks I have most experience with are made by Cold Steel. Cold Steel, of course, is very um, famous for their, uh, for their test cutting videos, uh, promotion videos especially, but uh, they are um, known for their knives, uh, for their machetes, for their swords and their tomahawks. I have to say I uh, like the knives uh, design uh, by Cold Steel, especially when they are inspired by popular knives or traditional traditional knives. Um, the problem is that when they come factory sharp, they are not as sharp as other knife makers send you the knife. So for a knife, I know many people are crazy about the paper cut test, but I think for a knife, this paper cut test in the beginning should work. That is how sharp a knife should be. When you get a knife from Moranif or uh, when you get the Schnitzel 3 uh, um, or other knives, uh, then they are as sharp a uh, paper cutting sharp and cold steel they have nice knife designs but they are never that sharp and especially when you think about their um, very macho um, test cutting videos uh, how sharp the weapons are uh, i have to say yeah then sharpen them when you send them out to the people um, again they are sharp enough to do some things they are sharp enough to carve wood they are sharp enough to cut your sausage or your cheese of course they are sharp okay you can cut with them but they could be sharper Okay, enough from the knives, uh, enough about the knives. Um, the swords, I will mention only quickly. Most of the swords Code Steel are making are looking good, but they are unwieldy iron bars. So I don't like them. Um, I think they are way too expensive. And the alternatives you have, by, especially by Hanwai or by Windlass, uh, when you buy Windlass, Windlass is never sharp. Um, but they can be sharp. So most shops um, offer you sharpening process and make it really sharp. So Windlass and Hanwai, in my opinion, are better options than the broadswords or cutlasses or sabers I had in my hand so far made by Cold Steel. They are unbalanced, unwieldy, sorry to say that. Um, the machetes are also quite good. I especially like the cutlass machete um, if you want to have a relatively inexpensive sword um, or sort like object is a little bit like a, a, an outdoor bushcraft modern zombie apocalypse Duzak you can buy uh, their cutlass machete this is quite nice but again for a machete it's not as sharp as it should be okay enough about these things what I really like made by Code Steel are their tomahawks and that is for many reasons first of all I have to say the tomahawks come also not as sharp as they could be but then again it's a wood processing object it's a an impact weapon, uh, so um, an axe to do its work for wood processing or also for fighting has not to be that sharp. Again, Moranif, in example, has a very nice camping hatchet, which comes paper cut sharp, which is ridiculously sharp for a, for a hatchet. Uh, but you see, you can make them that sharp. However, they are sharp enough uh, for, for hand axes. And I really like them because they are affordable. Uh, most of the tomahawks made by Cold Steel start with around 40, 50 euros or dollars. I don't know how much it is in the USA, but here in Europe you can buy them for like starting price 50 euros. And the maximum price is like 80 something euros, depending on the model. They have various models. I don't uh, have them all, all in my hands, but I know some. And I have to say, I really like them. Not all models are good. There's example, this Rifleman Hawk which is overly big, oversized, overly heavy. Uh, don't know why they don't throw this out of their program, especially because they have a very nice pipe head tomahawk, which looks similar, but is much better and lighter. Um, the ones I wanted to show to you 
First of all is my personal fighting tomahawk. This is a spike hawk. So obviously it has a spike. Um, this is uh, from the style you can could say it is more like a, a boarding hatchet or a small boarding axe. So boarding axes normally were quite big so you could not use them with one hand but I also saw in various maritime or naval museums like in, in Malta or also in Hamburg I saw um, like hand hatches or smaller hatches with a spike um, and very often you have this um, ball shaped uh, pommel on the end of the shaft um, and they were shorter so they were really more like for not only for woodworking but also for fighting because they were smaller and lighter and this one pretty much resembles that um, and I really like it it's around 650 grams in weight so it's very uh, durable and uh, yeah it's durable that is also true but it's also very um, light and swift for an axe um, and you can do all the tomahawk work you want to do with a long grip or the half choke middle grip or the full choke or short grip um, so this is really a nice tomahawk um, they make it always uh, with this kind of um, swollen, I think it's called friction. Uh, so you put the axe head at the end of the shaft and above, uh, up here it is um, too big so it cannot slide up furthermore. Also, I don't know if this is really necessary or useful. They have this little, uh, we call it maggot screw in German, this little maggot screw um, attached here to fix it. Don't know if it's really necessary however uh, when you throw it or when you chop wood with it it can get loose a little bit but then again you use a rubber hammer and hammer here or just you know hammer with a shaft or something like that so it's tight again quite easy so this one is really nice uh, also for throwing i think i never threw this one but i think this is very well balanced and you can see the shafts are always a little bit tapered towards the front I think that is great because this gives good grip for fighting, but it's also good for throwing and let the tomahawk fly out of your hand. The next cold steel tomahawk I wanted to show you is called the Trailhawk. So this is meant to be kind of an um, outdoor variation of a tomahawk also made for, you know, more like woodworking. So the blade shape is not that hooked. It's a little bit more forward or diagonal here. So um, for woodworking that you have more like, a, you know, like a splitting effect. Also, it has this hammer head and the, of course, not only a good weapon, but also it's important for hammering. So this would be the kind of small hand axe you would have with you when you make your, your wooden blockhouse or um, yeah, have to accept, uh, expect someone attacking you. So you have a nice tomahawk and tool at hand. It's even a bit lighter than this. I think it's like 630 grams, so also quite light. Of course, when you have a hammerhead or a spike, it always adds a little bit of weight, but not forward because it's on the back. So this is um, really a nice light and swift tomahawk for fighting and also good for outdoor working. So these are two very typical cold steel tomahawks. I also got the Frontier Hawk. I don't have it here. Um, which I'm, which is even lighter than this one and has a little bit more like this curved hook here but has no spike or hammer and it's very light. I think 610 grams or something like that so even a bit lighter than these two and this I made blunt for training purposes. Of course not for free or full contact sparring but for um, you know having the real thing for training and for display and showing and uh, you know teaching fighting with a tomahawk. So these are two very cool and typical tomahawks made by Cold Steel. I can highly recommend those, these two. Forgot to add the shaft of the tomahawk standard shaft is made of hickory wood. They come quite of a light color and plain. Um, sometimes they feel a little bit like covered with something, but I think they are not. Um, so uh, you can sandpaper them a little bit. You can oil them, you can bee wax them, and you can also make tons of modifications to let them look more historical. Um, what also works, um, Condor uh, from Knifemaker from Ecuador, they also offer tomahawks. Um, they are ex more expensive than the one by Code Steel. Um, from the weight, they are mostly uh, higher or, or a little bit heavier than the Code Steel tomahawks and the handles are a little bit shorter. 
Um, however, they are also quite nice and they offer a so-called, I think, Valhalla Viking battle axe, so a 70 centimeter long handled one handed axe for fighting as a Viking. Um, and these you can put into that if you want to have a longer handled tomahawk or if you say, okay, this is long, but I want to have a little bit longer. So I need something longer and can shorten it. So this is also quite a nice idea, um, making a longer handle into that. Now, the third hatchet or tomahawk, it's not really a tomahawk, it's a hatchet, is the standard throwing axe by cold steel. I think the design of the blade, uh, the axe head, is very much um, or very close to the um, Chinese axe gang or hatchet, uh, um, axe gang hatchet um, cold steel offers, but the um, handle is a little bit shorter. According to cold steel, these uh, are um, also, um, yeah fitting most of the regulations of um, axe throwing contest. I don't know about that. Um, I got it because I wanted to have a pure throwing axe um, and it only costs like 40 something euros. So this is really, really affordable. Also hickory, uh, hickory wood shaft, the of course shorter, much shorter than this one. Therefore I think for a fighting tomahawk, I prefer a longer handle so you have some reach because of course if you have to fight with this that also works because it is a hatchet still but a little bit more distance to and a little bit more variations with the distance with the three different grips i think um this length over your form like 55 60 centimeters in total maybe even 70 is better than this short one for fighting but if you have to you can of course use that but keep in mind Maybe you face with your tomahawk someone armed with a saber or even with a musket and bayonet. However, this is still a good hatchet. The weight of the axe head is already 600 grams, though this is much top heavier than these. But of course, that is meant for throwing. Um, so you have, I think, a very good turn. I have to take this to the axe throwing range and try it out one time. Um, however, um, I believe Cold Steel when they say it's a good throwing axe and, and, and they know they know the axe throwing, though they are really good axe throwers at, at Cold Steel. Um, so um, can you use this as a tomahawk trainer? Mm, yes, you can. As I said, you have a, a shorter shaft. You could reshaft this yourself. This is, by the way, traditionally or standard, uh, like made with um, this metal ring inside and, and the splint. Uh, so this is typical like a wood, like a, a woodworking axe. You can buy in every tool shop. So I would say this is also because it is short. It has like 600 grams um, axe head. So maybe in total it's like 700, 750 grams maybe. I think it's also a very good camp axe because it's light, it's short. You can um, take this with you quite easy. Uh, so I think not only for throwing, but also as a fighting axe, for bushcrafting, outdoor work, even a little bit of woodworking, I think this is not too bad as a hatchet. One thing that is also not so good with the cold steel tomahawks, they offer sheaths. Um, I don't know if, I think they have some models with leather sheaths and there are also some Etsy shops offering handmade leather sheaths for the cold steel, but regularly they come with these, I think it's Cordura or what is it is called. Um, and they have for the different models, they have different ones. But as you can see, this is a little bit too tight. And when you then close the button, you can manage it, but you know that that's that's not not clean work. That's a little bit sloppy. Okay, not that problematic because yeah, the only thing is they sell them separately, and the price is quite high when you have to pay for this crappy thing, twelve euros or fifteen euros extra. That is a little bit mm, okay. Uh, what you can do, though, is uh, CRKT, which is also a hatchet maker, offers different, um, not too expensive leather sheets, which you can also attach on your belt. And uh, you have to check out for the model because, of course, they are made for their tomahawks. However, if you can see, they have uh, sheets for their own spike hawk. And this sheath fits perfectly also around the cold steel tomahawk. So you have a very nice, not too expensive, much more beautiful sheath. Cold Steel has kind of a leather cover here so that you don't poke yourself with that. Okay, that, mm, yeah, okay, good. 
you can also put something on it so then this is also quite secure but yes of course this stays open with this but when you carry it on your belt it will not endanger you much um, so i don't think that's such a big issue such a big issue just a little tip if you don't want to buy the cold steel ones because they mostly have this um, kind of material you want to have something made out of leather crkt they have also tomahawks and the leather sheath also fits at least i have the experience that it fits with the uh, spike hawk made by cold steel this one here is not cold steel it's the cold steel uh, wooden shaft i used this um this is a standard tool shop uh, axe head it's a little bit flatter than compared to this heavier one um, a little bit more flattened out i think so this is also a standard, I think, like, uh, yeah, 600 or five, look, uh, yeah, 600 grams of next head weight. Uh, mostly you get typical uh, tool shop um, hatchets, you mostly get um, 500 or 600 grams as the lightest, though they tend to be a little bit uh, on the heavier side when you want to use them as a fighting uh, hatchet, but they work. You can take kind of a regular tool shop uh, axe head and rehandle it because most of the time they have these modern, I don't know if it's really modern, but you know what I mean, these type of handles. And uh, if you want to have a more traditional tomahawk handle, you can get a spare handle from cold steel and, you know, reshaft it yourself. What I did was to um, get the, the uh, friction up here because it's swollen. So I got it over here, it slided inside. I had to glue it a little bit and also I put in this metal ring so the um, yeah the, the wood goes to the sides, it gets bigger and now it's really tight. Uh, I would say I already chopped a little bit of wood with that. I, th I threw this ax already and so I think it's quite safe. When you do something with reshafting yourself, please take care to follow the rules and do it right so that not your axe head is flying around when you throw it or the, the shaft is going into, you know, thousands of pieces. So please be careful and do it the right way. There are, way, there are a lot of um, instructionals out there how you can reshaft your axe. However, this is also an option as a sharp training tomahawk, not as nice as this, the ones by um, cold steel, a little bit heavier, but still maybe you want to have something that you can use for processing wood, still resembles a little bit of a historical tomahawk or hatchet, um, and uh, which is robust and not too, um, not too expensive. As I said, you can have really easy um, a tomahawk for not a lot of money because these are kind of affordable by cold steel. Uh, and if you buy a good axe in a tool store, you can, you know, you can pay like 50, 60 or even more euros for a good hatchet, but you can also get cheaper ones. So take care of what you, what you, what you take. Um, one word about the tool shop hatchets again. This one is too heavy. This has one kilo or thousand grams of uh, axe head. Um, so this is good as a training tool for creating power for training your arms and wrist and everything, but really as a fighting weapon, of course, if you have to, you can use it, uh, grip it maybe a little bit shorter, but that is my, um, you know, firewood processing hatchet with a heavier head. Um, I would not recommend such one as a tomahawk trainer, but it has its place in this kind of trainer, um, you know, kind of trainer compilation. So. Tomahawks, really cool, really. Oh, this is by the way annoying. The the you see here the rest of the um, of the um, uh, what it is, you know, price uh, label or what whatever. Uh, and and these are really sticky. You you cannot get them off clean. So I have to clean these. I know I'm lazy. I did not do it yet, but you have to clean these. This is also a little bit annoying. But there are things that are more uh, problematic than this. So you can clean this. This is no problem. I think back then the tomahawks, or a couple of years ago, I already had the trail hawk back then, um, and they had I think also this black coating here. 
this looks a little bit different. Some people say they don't like it and they, you know, um, just rub it off. So with, with you know, make it um, shiny. Uh, I personally like it, but you can do that also with these kind of cold steel tomahawks. Okay, so a little bit about tomahawks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for, for uh, supporting me on this channel and on Facebook, also on Instagram. All important links are down below in the video description. And um, yeah, take care and I see you in the next video.